Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome to this session about Kuri Ramfushi, which is bringing both networking and storage to uh, Docker Swarm containers. Uh, this is uh, Hong Bing Lu, and I'm Antoni Seguro Poimedon. And uh, to give you a bit of background about what these projects are, uh, Courier Lab Network, it started on Liberty. And uh, what, what we started with was, there was Docker at the moment. Uh, we were not very satisfied with the kind of networking it, it gave uh, for production cases, and especially like if you wanted to have your own SDN, at the moment there was really nothing. So we got talking and finally when uh, they acquired Socket Plane and they uh, released Lib Network, which they work with uh, Weave and other people of the community, we set out to make a Lib Network remote driver for uh, Neutron. And the idea is that Neutron is a, a trusted and production ready uh, gateway to a lot of SDNs. There's a lot of backends that implement it, and uh, there was a lot of people that, a bit of the leitmotif of the project is, there's a lot of people with clouds that are having uh, VM workloads, and as they want to move to container workloads, uh, it's better or much more uh, convenient for them to add those new workloads with an infrastructure that they already know and have people to manage and, and that's why we added uh, Courier Lib Network. And the first target that we had was bare metal. So if you wanted to run your uh, Docker containers on alongside uh, VMs on your uh, compute nodes, that, that was the first case. Uh, we also uh, tackled the case of where no computes uh, would be there. Then we noticed that Horizon had some issues when Nova was not in the picture at all. But, uh, but, but then uh, we said, well, there is a lot of people that due to uh, the shortcomings of isolation prefer to run the containers inside VMs or sometimes just for uh, convenience of deployment that you uh, have access to a, to a cloud but you don't have necessarily access to, to the hardware. So you just create a few VMs and you can just run the containers there and span, spin up your uh, cluster there. And then Fushi started a, a cycle later to and, and set out to do the same uh, thing for Cinder. Uh, if you were at the keynote this morning, uh, there was a demonstration. I think uh, it was John Griffith. I never remember exactly with the names. I'm a bit bad. but. Uh, He's, uh, he has his own Golang uh, driver. Uh, it, it's made by the, by the Cinder community. Uh, and that one is also providing access for, um, for Docker to consume uh, volumes that are stored in, in Cinder. Uh, but this one is a different one that is, is the, the Fushi project. And, and what it does is it also allows you to, to give access to Manila. And, and Hongbin uh, is uh, it's top contributor, uh, and it, he's going to talk about that one later. I don't know so much about it. So uh, in this session, we're going to focus more on container in VM. Uh, but if people have questions about what happens with bare metal uh, Docker uh, uh, containers, please feel free to ask them. If it's about Kubernetes, there's a session about that tomorrow that uh, I hope you, you join as well that we will go very deep into the details about uh, how we do things. So the three modes in which we allow people to uh, start Docker containers inside v, uh, VMs, and when I say VMs, that is uh, equivalent to Nova instances. Uh, if you start your VM with something else, then uh, you're pretty much on your own. So the way that we uh, perform that is by default, when we want to try it out, we use neutron trunk ports, and I'm going to go into detail about what they are. How, how many of you are familiar with neutron trunk ports? Okay, I'm glad I made the slide then. Uh, then uh, another option is to use MacVillan. Uh, how many people are aware about MacVillan? Okay, so just a short summary for those that are not aware. MacVillan is basically a way that you 
uh, take a device. In this case, if it's a VM, it's going to have most, most likely an Ethernet uh, Beard IO uh, device uh, at zero. And you want to have several devices from it. One option is you create a, a bridge. You put the Ethernet on the bridge. And then you put VF devices into the containers. The other option is you get rid of the bridge altogether and you use MacVillan, which kind of implements a bridge, in fact. Uh, and you just tell uh, to the new virtual device, to the MacVillan, I'm, uh, I'm linked to this Ethernet Zero device, and, uh, but I have a different Mac. So the, the, operate, the guest operating system driver, what it will do is it will uh, listen for all those Mac villains. The problem is when you have a lot of Mac villain devices, uh, in VMs it doesn't matter so much, but in hardware the, the limitation is uh, there is a limit to how many uh, Macs uh, a card can listen to before it goes into promiscuous mode, and when it goes into promiscuous mode, it's le less efficient. So because of this and other reasons, uh, people in the community added support for IP VLAN, and what it does is it segmentates on the L3 level. So all the devices on the, on the, for the containers that you're going to run on the VM are going to have the same MAC address, and they are going to split depending on the IP that you assign to them. So, Maybe you could, if you're familiar with the uh, old school alias devices that, you, that used to be in, in Linux, it's, it's sort of like that, but more modern. Um, so the, the good thing about the way we implemented this is that we did it only using uh, Neutron uh, primitives, so it should work with any backend. Maybe the Neutron trunk uh, not, because I know that some backends don't support it, but nothing prevents them from, from implementing this service plugin. It's, it, it shouldn't be a big deal for them. Um, and we have it tested with Dragonflow, uh, I think uh, also with OVN and uh, OVS. So it, it covers quite a big amount of, of the deployments that there are nowadays. All right, so why is it useful to do that instead of, let's say, just um, have your Docker containers on a Docker Zero bridge on the, on the VMs. Well, one of the, of the things that, that it buys you is that each container, uh, so first you can manage the, those networks on, of Docker in, in, in Neutron. Then each, port, each uh, container gets its own Neutron port, so you can uh, direct uh, the API to, 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 the, to the container, and by that I mean you can apply security group to a specific container, and I'm going to show how to do that. And you can do several other things, uh, like if you would want to then use VPN as a service or something like that, you, you would be able to do that because it's a real object in the, in the OpenStack infrastructure. Um, and then uh, one thing that is a bit bad is that until we implement trusts, you need to have credentials on the VM for, like if your tenant of the VMs uh, wants to use this, so he has to put his token in the courier configuration on, on the VM, on each VM, for it to access Keystone. But that's something that we're going to improve, and, some, and for a lot of people it's not a limita that big of a limitation. Um, and yes, the, 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 as I said before, it's about moving people uh, into containers and making it easy and, and that if you are, a, let's say that you're a company and you're adding a new team and the new team uh, wants to work with microservices and they want to use Docker, this way uh, they will be able to consume the services that you have running on, you're developing a new component that needs to talk to a pre-existing service that runs on VMs, you have everything on the same network so you don't need to, to fiddle with your data center. So trunk ports. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, OVS, with the reference implementation, usually there is the BR int, and you've never seen uh, the one in the middle. So the one in the middle, let's, let's follow it from the top up, okay? There is the, the F0 port, that's always there, and that's always a tab device, usually managed by libvirt, if you use all the uh, regular stuff. And then, as you can see, the tab device here is not plugged to a BR int, but instead is plugged to a, a, an OVS bridge. The, it's the, the trunk bridge. And what it does is it splits uh, everything that comes from the tab device depending on the VLAN 
the, that arrives from the top. So in this case, you can see that there's the VLAN zero, let's say, the S zero, the, the communication that comes from the VM. Then there is VLAN 42 and VLAN 40, and it splits that into two uh, internal ports. So uh, in, in green and in uh, kind of blue, I, I have my, my color choice sometimes is a bit poor. Uh, and then those uh, three internal ports of OBS are the ones that are uh, connected to the BR int. And as you can see, since the pod network in this case, I said pod, pod because in this case it's for, for Kubernetes, but for Docker it would be Docker network. Even though they are on the same network, and you can see that they are on the same subnet, um, th their paths don't join until BR int. What this means is that if you have security groups that need to be applied between pod to pod communication, or container to container communication, it will still happen. It will not go just inside the VM. So this, this allows you to have more security. And in, BR, in BRint, as always, each subnet gets its own uh, tag. So nothing changes on that. Any questions about transports before I move on? All right. So the Mac VLAN, IP VLAN solution, it's a bit different. And the reason why is because uh, Neutron trunk ports at the moment only support one kind of segmentation, which is VLAN, the one that we showed just now. And uh, it would be nice if Neutron also added uh, Mac VLAN uh, support or IP VLAN support for segmentation. But with IP VLAN, it's a bit complicated because by default, uh, it allows, I'm, I'm, now I'm not sure if there is a mode that allows you to not have communication between the different uh, devices on the, on the guest. With Mac VLAN, actually, there is a mode that always sends the communication down so that it would allow us to reach VR int, and it would be nice to have that. But for now, what we do is we, allow, we use allowed address pairs. So we create the port to allocate the IP so nobody else can take it, and then we add it to the allowed address pairs of the VM. So that's, that's how it works. Uh, and I, I wanted to say that those several modes of operation uh, that, that, that I said, the one that goes all the way down or the one that allows uh, horizontal communication, you should choose them depending on your needs. So for example, if you don't care about uh, blocking communication inside one uh, subnet, maybe you can use the mode that allows communication and you're going to have a slightly faster performance in east-west traffic inside that uh, subnet. So this is a bit to sum up uh, the kind of choices that you have for giving uh, container networking uh, using Neutron on the, on the Nova instances. If you need a lot of containers, probably trunk ports with VLAN are not uh, the go-to solution because it has the limit of the VLAN IDs, which are 4096. And uh, of course, you could always plug different uh, ports into the VM, like attach new ads, and then bind to several ones, but we don't support that yet. And honestly, nobody has come up with that requirement, so it's, it's, it's a thing to, to take into consideration. The other thing is, if you are running uh, your Docker clusters on VMs that are created on, Mi on Mitaka or uh, older that don't support trunk ports, you are pretty much, uh, the decision is pretty much made for you that you have to run IP VLAN or Mac VLAN because otherwise you, you would not be able. All right, so just to give you an idea of what it takes uh, to run this, uh, and I have to, to thank uh, uh, Leaping Mao for contributing the, 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 the plugin support. R right now it's pretty easy. Uh, if you want to, to try it out, you just do Docker plugin install courier a slash lib network too, and it will automatically fetch from Docker Hub uh, the last container that we built, and it will already propose you to mount those mount points that you can see there, uh, most important of them being etc courier. So if you just place your courier.com file there, uh, it will just uh, start working, and then you can just create the networks, and we're gonna get into that. So on Nova instances, uh, if you use the OBS reference implementation, you must run uh, the trunk service plugin because otherwise the trunk ports will not get created and so on. And also you should use the, the firewall driver OpenB switch uh, because 
there is some problem with the hybrid one, and believe me, it's a big problem, <laughs> because I, when I was preparing the demo, I could not figure out what happened. I said, okay, let's try the native OBS uh, firewall driver, and then everything started working. So I, I recommend you to do that. Unless you're a, no, uh, a Newton developer, then I encourage you to try to fix the one <laughs> for OBS hybrid. Uh, all right, so if you don't want to install it like that, you can also use pip, or you can use uh, just the tarball or whatever. It's it's pretty much up to you. Uh, then other things, so that what we saw before was the, the configuration of Neutron, uh, and the configuration of courier that you would put on each or your, of your VMs is, is the following. So you have to specify which is your link device, so that it knows from which to create the IP VLAN devices or the VLAN devices or the Mac VLAN devices, and you should specify also what kind of driver you want. So. Again, the, the same, like if you want VLAN or, or Mac VLAN or so. And uh, finally, uh, we have options for running uh, SSL. So in the typical case, you may not need it because you just bound locally to uh, 127.0.0.1. Uh, but if you need it because you have uh, some specific requirements, you can configure uh, that the communication between Docker and uh, the lib network REST driver uh, is encrypted in, uh, in TLS. All right. Um, and finally, for running, which is probably the most interesting one, uh, if somebody wants to, to get started with this. Uh, by the way, there is a project onboarding tomorrow uh, that, that you will be able to run this if you bring your laptop and you are ready to run DevStack. Uh, so as you can see, you can create a network. Uh, you can also create... so. The, the, the default is to create a network, and that is just following the API that Docker provides you, but Docker uh, also gives you the possibility to add your own options, and what we do with those options is whenever people come up and have a requirement like, hey, I have this VM networking, uh, th this VM network, sorry, and I want to start a container in it to see what's happening in that network. Uh, so we have an option to specify already the network so that when you create the, the, net, the network in Docker, instead of going to Neutron and creating a separate network with the options that you specified, it will find the network in Neutron, it will make a, a mapping between them. And to be able to do that, we use the Neutron resource tags, which are awesome, uh, because they allow us to uh, preserve the names. Before we had that, we had to modify the name of the, of the network, so people were like, it ain't my network, but you know, it was still there, but, but renamed. And uh, another interesting thing is that it allows you to uh, even reuse a port. If you have a, a port that you created and it is unbound, and it matches the IP that you specify when you do the Docker run, it will actually uh, reuse the existing port. So if you have a prepared port with some specific security group configuration, that's a good way to do it. And otherwise, you can do the normal Docker option of exposing the port, and it will set up a security group for it and, and, and apply it. And here I, I give to Hongbin to talk about storage. Thanks, Tony. So, uh, so Tony talked about the current deep network. That is about the solution. That is for the network king part of the Docker. So I'm going to talk about the FUSIS, which is a current project. That is for solving the container persistence problems. And so perhaps I should give a brief introduction of how the container storage is going to work in the Docker. So, so when you create a Docker container, it will have the file system of the, inside the container that is from the image. And in the container image, there are several layers of the there are several layers of the image, and each layer has a portion of the file systems. And generally, all the image that is all come up together to provide the uh, the root file system of the containers. So when you write something that is in in the dockers, and suppose the data volume is not provided, and you are writing to a layers. That is Docker that is create on top of all the image, on top of the all the image layers, and each write to the layers, they the Docker is going to copy the file that is in the image and copy the whole file to the to the upper layers and 
this is how the Docker Union file system is going to work. And this is this approach is good because for share the image for multiple containers and it will put the container that's very fast and but it has some performance issues for copy the files. Uh, in particular, if the file is very large, and each, each time you write to a file, and the whole file is going to copy, and the, there's, there's a significant overhead of if you're writing a lot of data to the containers. And the, another problem is when you delete the containers, and all the data you are writing to the file system is going to lose. And so to solving this problem, and Docker has another feature that's called the data volumes. And a data volume is, uh, generally speaking, is a storage that is mounted to the specific path of the containers. And so that each time you write the data to this particular path of the file systems, and it will bypass the union file system of the Dockers. And it will directly write to the storage back end. And so FUSI is the project that is to provide the implementation of the data volume for the dockers by using the cinders or maninas. And it's up to you to choose which back end you are going to use. And there's a cell use case for the cinders. And so first is to allow you to use the docker CLIs to create a data volume that is in the dockers, but in the back it is actually go to cinders to create cinder volumes and use a cinder volume as a dockers for their storage. And it allow you to dynamic create the volumes or you can pass the volume that is already created and pass, pass, pass the UID to dockers and let the docker to use that volumes and it also support the custom modes so that if you have multiple hosts, multiple nodes, and each you create a volume in one of the nodes, and it will be reused by another node, if so that the same volume won't duplicate created. And in alternative to the cinders, there's another choice which is Maninas, and it has a similar use case, but it just Use different use a shared file system instead of the block storage, and so this is the FUSI for the Docker. So FUSI has a component that's called the FUSI servers, and it is the FUSI server is just a process, and but it's implement the uh, Docker volume plugin interface, and so that it. Each time the Docker is going to create a volume, that is, the, if the driver is FUSI, they will, the, the Docker will call the API of the FUSI servers, and the FUSI server will go to the cinders or maninas to create a. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I want to make sure I understand you correctly. So the uh, FUSI, that, that's not the correct, it's FUSI or the FUSI, how do you pronounce it? Uh, you can say, f I spell it FUSI. It, it can be a VMs or a compute node. It can be either? Yeah, it can be either. And so and what it does is sort of like, in some way integrates or connects the storage to the Docker. Is that, am I understanding correctly? I think yes. And then sender goes through and configures. You can use the sender CLI to configure the storage itself. Yes. Okay, all right, I just want to make sure I understand. So the, there is a demo that, that he will show then like how it, you can create the, the, the cinder volume and how it, it's accessible and so on. Oh, it sounds like this is great. I'm excited. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, the communication between the FUSIs and the cinder is secured by Keystone. And yeah. So, this is a proposal for the how to integrate the FUSI with the Kubernetes. And the proposal just got approved, but there's no code there. We haven't started implementation yet, so if But a lot of ideas. <laughs> no code, but a lot of ideas, I said. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to join the efforts, and welcome to join. And, and so this proposal is about 
to reuse the FUSI server that we already implement for Docker and we will use it for the Kubernetes. So in this design, we propose to have two components. The first one is called a volume provisioner. So this volume provisioner is just, just, just a process that is watch the Kubernetes API to see if the user that is creating persistent volume cranked and if the user create a P PVC that is persistent, yeah, if the user create a PVC, the, the volume provisioner go to, first they will provision a persistent volume in the Kubernetes and then they will go to Cinders or Meninas to create a, the actual resource. And yes, and then there's another component that's called a fresh volume drivers. And this component should be resized on each node that is run the Kubernetes. And it will use by the Kubernetes to connect the, to the volume that is already provisioned in before. And so that the pod can use these volumes. Yes. So this is the config file of the of the FUSIs. So is so the operator need to set several parameters and some first they can set the volume providers and it can be Cinders or Maninas or it can be both. So the user can choose which one they want and it need to set the IP address and you need to set the volume connector. So by default, it's using the OS bridge, which is the library that is developed by the Cinder teams. And it need to set the, you can set the FS type, uh, which is the Cinder Pacific, I think. It's a Cinder Pacific parameters and yeah. And the Manila, you can set something that is similar. So, to use the FUSIs and this is the sample command and so it so first you can yeah you use a Docker CLIs and create the volumes and set the driver as a FUSIs and pass several parameter that is Cinder Pacific on and specify the volume provider and point to Cinders. Then the Docker will create the volumes, which is actually the Cinder volumes and or in an Alternative, you can point to the volume ID that is a single volume that's already created and ask the Docker to create volume that is using this volume. And so the Docker won't create a new volume, but using the existing volumes. And, and you can do something that's similar for the Meninas and the command will be very similar. And then when you run the Docker is, is just as normal. You use a slash V options to bind the volume to a specific path of the containers. And that's it. Yeah, so for the roadmap for the full C part is, first we are going to, so uh, Tony show that the Kirby NIP level, you can use the plugins to install the full C NIP network. So the, for, sorry the curry deep networks. So FUSI, we are planning to do something that's similar to support the Docker plugin installations. And we are going to support the TLS to secure the, the communication between the Dockers and the FUSIs. And for the Kubernetes, we are going to implement the fresh volume drivers and implement the <coughs> Kubernetes integrations and set our CIs. And for the lib networks, we, um, we, we can, we are going to support the global scope to support the swarm mode. We are going to support the Docker swarm multi-node CI. And that's the roadmap. And then I'm going to show a short demo. And so in this, stop. So in this demo, I'm, I'm going to create a containers and a VMs. And this, I'm going to show that the container and VM can be, can be uh, in the same networks, 
are in the same neutral networks. They can ping each other, and they are mount to the same shared file system so that they can, the data that is right to the file system, they can see each other. So I'm um, doing the Docker network list to, you can see that we already create the Docker networks that is of the driver of the query. And we are going to inspect this network. You can see all the parameters. And most of them are neutron specifics. And for example, the UID of the neutron X. And, and then I'm going to show you the volumes that I already create. And the driver is FUSIS. And we look into the volumes and we see the parameters and this volume is from Molinas and and I'm going to use the Manina API to show the detail of, the, of these shares and so this is the property of these Manina shares. It is a share file systems and And then I'm going to create Docker containers. And I use a slash V option to bind the volume we already create to the path, that is data. And we are going to specify the networks of this container to use a MyNet, which is the current networks we already create. And it takes a few seconds and the container is we should get into the containers, yeah. So right now we get into the containers. And then I'm going to use another terminal to get into the VMs. And this VM we, I already created and it is under the same level of the containers. And this VM is also already mounted to the shared share file systems that is provided by the maintainers. So I'm going to SSH to this VM. So the first thing I'm going to show is we have the IP address of the VMs and I try to inside the containers. I try to ping the IP address of the VMs, and you can see it's pingable, and the IP address is actually the private IP address, so it's not a public IP address. So I'm going to do something that is opposite. So I'm inside the VMs, I try to ping the IP address of the containers, and it's also pingable. Yep. So that means the VMs and the container is in the same networks. And, and then I'm going to show the shared file systems that is mount to the, that is shared by the VMs and the containers, that which is data. And so first in the, in, inside the VMs, I'm going to write something to the shared directories. And so I go back to the containers, I try to check what I'm going to write. And, And we can see the data is there. And, and then I'm going to do something similar. So inside the, inside the container, I try to write something to the shared file system, to shared directories. And in the VM, we should check it is, is the, the, the data is written. Yeah, that's about the demo. Yeah. All right, so if you have any question uh, about FUSI, about the uh, Gutterlib network, or about Gutter in general, please feel free to go to one of the microphones and ask. Otherwise, you can meet us after the session or tomorrow in one of the sessions that we'll do. What time is the session again tomorrow morning? Uh, 
tomorrow the onboarding is at um, wait I have it here on some other huh? I think it's 11 something wait um, project updates at 11 a.m. Uh, at uh, MRI MR uh, 105 and then there is the Korean Kubernetes session uh, at 1.50. All right, so if there is no questions, uh, thanks a lot. And uh, I hope that, that you will all come tomorrow to the onboarding and, and try out uh, Kudir and Fushi.